Okay. Good evening, everyone. It is, uh, oh my gosh, I lost my day. It is Tuesday the 16th, mm -hmm. February 16th. It's been a long day. Uh, Dad and I had to go to Phoenix this morning really early, and we just got back a few hours ago, so it's been uh, a lot of driving today. But anyway, we're back. We made it on time, and um, I got somewhat prepared for tonight. So hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody's having a great week so far. We've got, I've got a couple things I want to share tonight. Um, three actual questions. They're all fairly quick, but um, an update on the, the possible Zoom workshops slash class. Um, we're getting a lot of great response. It looks like it's going to happen. We're still not sure for sure because we still have some technical stuff we got to figure out. But it looks really good. So if you guys haven't heard about that, that is, um, uh, and you want more information on it, basically it's going to be six Saturdays in a row for an hour, probably in the morning as far as Arizona time goes. I haven't set a time yet, but it'll go th from, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the dates now, uh, next month, like uh, next month is March. <laughs> March, March 6th through April 10th, something like that. Six Saturdays in a row. Anyway, um, I'm a, I hope it really happens. I hope we get enough interest that Wave. it happens. Wave? Yeah. Tessa's that, in the car. She can't hear you, but she can see you. <laughs> Hi, Tessa. Um, drive careful. So, um, anyway. So, we'll see if it happens. If you guys want information on that, let me know. Eric at makeawoodsign.com, but um, it looks pretty good right now, and uh, we've got a little while to go. Probably going to make the announcement whether it's going to happen in the next couple weeks. We should have all of everything come together for us to where we can uh, say yay or nay. Um, anyway, so let me know if you want information on that. Um, all right, let's get into these questions. So we've got uh, first question is. Um, do you do the background deeper than you do, say, your letters, if that makes sense? So that's a question I get quite often because there seems to be a confusion on when I do my background, how deep I go. Um, so here's just a sign that I made, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And, and the, general, the general question or answer is yes, I do go basically the same. But that could change if I'm doing really small letters and, and I, um, I can't go as deep, but then I make a second pass on them. So generally speaking, if they're letters like inch and a half, two inch or bigger, then generally speaking, I'm somewhere around three sixteenths on the depth on the profile bit. That, that's the one that goes around the letters. And then this is the background. This is what I use a 90 degree bit for. And generally speaking, I'm 3 sixteenths to a quarter. But it really is, and I think people kind of get um, caught up on this. It really doesn't make that big a difference. Even if you carved a lot shallower than you did your background, it really doesn't matter, at least for the way I do my signs. Yeah, it seems to be freezing up a little bit, so don't move around so fast. Okay. I know you don't think about it, but... Yeah. Um, so b the way I do my signs mostly is I spray the background black. And when I do that, it really doesn't make a difference in the way it looks. Whether... Give, me, give me one second. Hold on a minute. Yes, I just did. Okay. All right. All right. We'll see how that works. So we're, we're up and running again. Okay. We appear to be. Okay. So. The way I do my background and the way I do most of my signs, especially the small ones, is I spray them black and then I sand them off. So if the profile bit was uh, shallower than the, the background, then it really wouldn't make that big a difference. It really wouldn't show up. Um, the main thing is that you want your background deep enough that you don't end up with high spots. And along those lines, watch tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video is going to be my kind of my standard video that I send people to. Oh, when... shoot. Sorry, guys. I forgot to put the mic in. All right. That'll work. 
All right, let's see if the sound is better. I forgot to put the mic in. Sorry, guys. Yeah, and I didn't notice it wasn't yeah. in either. So if, um, yeah, watch tomorrow's video. That's Wednesday, will be Wednesday the 17th. Tomorrow, it's all about my background, my standard background, and a lot of details on um, little minute stuff that I do that I haven't really talked about a lot. So uh, tomorrow's uh, video will definitely, YouTube video, will definitely give you a lot of ins and outs on and do's and don'ts on doing the background. So, um, and if you have questions on that, obviously you can email so somebody me. wants to know where you got those perfectly straight letters. He said he bought some and they're all over the place at different sizes and stuff. So who knows where he bought them. Uh, we make them and we sell them on the website. It was... Yeah. Um, Dick Geigel? Yeah, Did Dick. You get your perfect letters. I got some today. They're terrible in different heights. Didn't get them from us. Yeah. Dick, we make our own. We uh, laser cut and we have them. Uh, that's that's actually how we support our, uh, our business is we sell supplies. We sell router bits and layout letters and a bunch of other things. But we've got it on the website makeawoodsign.com so um yeah we make our uh, i don't know what have we got six different fonts we've got you know hundreds of different sizes and fonts of layout letters and numbers cut out of eighth inch birch so if you have any questions on that dick just let us know we can uh, send you a link to the website we're saying that they're they've been out of power 17 hours 24 oh hours, my gosh because of the storms wow yeah. wow Gosh, that's horrible. I can't imagine. We go out of power for a half hour We're and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my hair out. It's crazy. Anyway, what font was that sign? That was Clarendon. The Clarendon font. Two inch and inch and a half. Um, that's my favorite font. Vicky doesn't like I it much. Like it, Vicky doesn't like it, but it's my favorite font. It's the one that I've used for... You know, since we started Carbon Signs way back when, Clarendon. Um, okay, so uh, another question from Chris Masters. I've got a small question. Every time you carve a new sign, do you sharpen your bits or make sure that they are sharp enough to cut through hardwoods? Or do you, um, or do you check them to make sure they're sharp for carving at all? So, yeah, I normally do. I don't sharpen my bits in between each sign. Uh, I sharpen them probably every half dozen signs just because I can, but a lot of the bits will carve way beyond that. Now, one thing that I do is I clean them in between signs. So very seldom do I do a sign and then before I do another one, do I not clean my router bits? And you want to clean them. We actually, I've got a, uh, a video that I put on the board. You want to go watch this video that I did not too long ago. Uh, that one right there. So it's on YouTube, even though it says it's a Facebook Live. And in case you guys don't know, in case you're new, this is a Facebook Live, but later on, like a week or two after, uh, I will post this video, because we're recording this, and I will post this on YouTube, as uh, so everybody on Facebook and on YouTube can see what the uh, what this material is about. Anyway, what this video is about. So go check out this video and I'll show you how to do that in just a second when I talk about the channel search. But this video will show you how to clean your router bits. But basically we do it with a little Dremel tool and a wire, um, a wire brush, like a, a brass wire brush in a Dremel, uh, little Dremel. And that works really, really well. Tracy Detwell says his wife says he's OCD about cleaning his bits. <laughs> yeah, it really makes a difference. It really does. Your bits will last so much longer if you clean them after every sign. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it because if you don't, then they'll just they'll get hot and they'll dull much faster than I. I talked to somebody the other day that cleans their bits, you know, frantically. They're you know, obsessive about it. And they've been carving with the same bit without sharpening it for months. And uh, it just keeps on going. So. Okay, uh, Scott, oops. 
Hold on, I lost it. There was a question. Oh, Michael Higgins says, is there any telltale signs that your bits are dull and need sharpening? Yeah, there's a couple different ways. There's um, what my dad likes to do, and I can, if you want to send me an email, I can send you videos, but um, I can send you links to videos, or, or I'll actually show you how to find the videos yourself here in a second. Uh, dad uh, scrapes it across his thumbnail, and um, that tells him whether it's dull or not. That never has really worked well for me. So what I do is I look right at the bit and um, and I look to see if it is shiny right on the edge. And that tells you if you looked under a microscope, then it would be kind of rounded over. But Don Spicer said that was me, Eric. I sometimes clean my bits midway through carving a sign. Yep. There you go. I knew it was somebody. Yeah, that was just not too long ago. We, Don told me that. That's fantastic. Um, so... Then And then the other way is that if it starts burring at the surface or even down in the groove, that could be, uh, that could be a sign that your bit is getting dull. Not always, though, because sometimes that's the wood. Um, and then another one is if it gets harder to hold a line. If you notice that when you, your bit was brand new, you could hold a line pretty well, but all of a sudden you can't seem to quite hold that line. It wants to drift on you more and it catches grain more. That's an indication your bit is dull. But not always. Sometimes that can it can do that if your uh, if your bearings are going out in your router. But that's that's a lot less often than your bit getting dull. Uh, Matt okay. Bay says, did anyone see? Frozen Titebon glue is not ruined. Titebon says it can be frozen. Hold on. Uh, I can't click on it. Uh, and thawed five times before it's ruined. Because you keep it in the refrigerator, I guess. Or, oh, well, well I guess weather. it's, yeah, it's outside yeah. if it's frozen. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I just haven't run into that. I didn't see that, but that's interesting information. I didn't know that. Yeah, we just don't have that that Charlie issue. Said, Is that what they told you? I don't know. I would be questionable. Huh. Anyway. Interesting. Okay. So, um, that is that. If you guys have questions, obviously you know how to get a hold of me. Um, okay. So now here comes, here comes a question from a new person. It says, seems I'm all over the place watching your episodes. Can you teach me a way to sort the episodes, please? I think I need to learn to sort by date and then specific episodes. Example, template making. So let me show who you a was, couple who things. Who asked that question? Mm, I don't know. It doesn't oh, say. Because I had a guy call me today about that. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you tell him what to do? Uh -huh. Good. All right. Yeah, so, there's my brother from another mother. Okay. So here we go. Uh, well, let me do this first. I know I'm probably messing up the yes, video. Yes, you are. So uh, this is the channel. YouTube. Uh, we got a glare from the light. Oh. There you go. YouTube.com slash old day 100. Yeah, I'm right down on there. So yeah. when you turn it, kind of do it slow. I'll keep it right where it's at. So that's the YouTube channel right there. So once you get there, you'll see this. This is uh, the front page of the, of the channel. Now, if you want to search... By, uh, by number or even by a title or even by a subject. Let's say you want to search by uh, template, okay? Template making. So over here, you have a little spyglass. And if you click on that, it comes up with a search window. That's the channel search. You can search whatever you want right in there. If you know the specific video number that you want to look for, or if you know the subject that you want to look for, use a channel search. Do not use the, the search up here. That will search all of YouTube. This searches just our channel. So this is what, that's what's called this channel search. So um, that's what I, I suggested to him. Now there's, an, there's other ways to find videos on our channel. By the way, we have, we have over 1400 videos, so it can, it can be daunting if you don't use these tricks. Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, let me, so let's see here. So now if you want to search our videos, uh, let's see, did I do this right? Um, yes. 
So once, you, once you've gone to the front page and you want to see our videos like you want to see the oldest ones first, like in order, then you will click on this little word, it says videos, right here, uh, there, and then it will look like this. And then over here, you'll see three little lines. If you click on that, you'll see date Hi, Tracy. you'll see date added oldest date added newest and most popular and you click on those and then it will um it will put them all in order however you want them from front to back or back to front or even just the most popular and that's really the best way now the other way is there's a playlist here and we have uh gosh i don't know i think i've got like 12 or 15 different play playlists One's on demos, one's on newsletters, one's on finishing, one's on uh, edges. There's just a lot of different playlists. So that's a good way to find uh, videos on specific, uh, specific subjects as well. Okay, so I hope that helps. That's, I'm done there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all done showing those. So, um, um, real quick, Matt Bay asked what was scary about doing that Luna sign with the uh, Fordham. I was so afraid I was going to hit one of those letters and take a big old chunk of it out that wasn't going to be able to be fixed. So, so he was asking you the scary part, not yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that was scary for me because I'd never done anything with the, on one of Eric's signs like that. Um, and you have she was question. she was kind of freaked out that she was going to screw it up. She did. You did great though. You really didn't have any problem. I don't know why it won't let me read this whole question. Um, Bruce Peters says, other than blowing out and dust uh, the dust, blowing out the dusting off and general cleaning, is there more detailed maintenance we should ne be doing on the? something and it won't let me read what the rest of it is so. probably on the routers um you know just check the brushes periodically that's that's the biggest thing uh, the other thing as far as maintenance goes just try to keep them blow, blown out um and then the other thing is that and i think this is something I, i've shared this before but if you're if you just get done carving let's say this is your router and you just get done carving. A lot of people will take their router and set it upside down on the on the bench because most of them are flat on top and they'll set it upside down. I don't think this will leak. This, they'll set it like this. The problem with that is if it is still running, if it's like winding down, it's still sucking air in through the top. And if you've got uh, sawdust on your bench, it'll suck sawdust right into those bearings and into the internal parts. So uh, don't do that. Make sure it's completely stopped before if you were going to turn it upside down. That's just a, a tip. We've shared that before. Okay, sign carvers of the day. That's what I was going to say. I could just go back and zoom back I'm in. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get too close because the... Okay. So this is uh, Brett Fry, one of his first signs, which is pretty incredible for a first sign. That's beautiful. Great job, Brett. Really, really nice. This one's cool. So this is Bert Graham's grandson. Bert is a good friend of ours. He was here for uh, our last class that we did a couple years ago. And his grandson's 10 years old. And uh, his grandson, his, he was insistent that he do the coloring with colored pencils. So um, <laughs> great job. And what's his name? Uh, Marcus. Great job, Marcus. Congratulations, Bert. You did well teaching your grandson. That's terrific. Scott Baldwin uh, started watching in April of 2020. That yeah. Start watch, started watching in April of 2020, made about 30 signs. This is his first sale. The customer was thrilled with it. Lots of, uh, I know he's got lots of customers coming. That is really, really nice. Great job, Scott. Congratulations on your first sale, buddy. All right. Um, Eric Dur Dur in, uh, Duranery. Deranier. Deranier. Yeah, it could be. Very first sign. 
Um, and for doing your, your first sign, that's really ambitious. That's a, that's a difficult carve. And for doing that, for your first one, you did really good, Eric. Good job, buddy. Don Belleville, uh, her first sign. And this was a, for a fundraiser for her son's memorial. Wow, that's really spectacular. Great job, Don. I uh, and I think I think she wrote me and said that she raised like $150 with it. So congratulations, Don. Michelle Scarantino, or it could be Scarantino. I think she's down in Texas. This is a big sale. She sold 50 of these. Uh, magic bottle holders to a realtor and uh, the grapes are carved in there so uh, congratulations Michelle that's a nice order 50 of them wow it's a lot of work great job Michelle um, gosh Keith Davenport so now Keith did something here uh, that you know um, there's not too much that surprises me but he came up with a way of doing this that I think is terrific so here's what he did. Uh, he did his layout and he carved at half the depth that he was going to go. Then he painted it. And then he did his final carve after he painted it. Which means he was carving out anything that was left down in that groove. He was carving it out by going his full depth. Which I think is, what a cool idea. I don't know why I've never thought of that. I lightly sanded the edges to make it look older and used a cove bit on the edge for a different look. After it was done, I gave it three coats of triple thick spray poly. So that's that triple thick in a can. I think it's a Krylon product. Anyway, what a cool idea, Keith. I got to give that a try. Great job, man. Um, Eric Stamatelos. Stamatelos. So um, this, if you can't read it, it says... Uh, Unless you're God or Waylon Jennings, remove your remove boots. Your boots. Remove your boots. So you know these, what yeah, that's what it is. Oh. Yep. Uh, these torch signs are super popular now. I'm not a uh, big on the torch stuff, but um, they're super popular. A lot of people love that stuff. So great job, Eric. I'm, I imagine you'll sell a bunch of those. Stephen from we know Stephen. He made that. Know. From Thumb. Stephen From, this is a 15 inch uh, pine round. Very nice. Good job, Stephen. I like it. And Mickey Sewell. So Mickey uh, made this for his nephew Kyle that named his backyard Tropicile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After planting grass, lounge chairs, and a small, bowl, uh, a small blow up kiddie pool. <laughs> um, buffer he used a buffer pad on uh, to shine up the resin which he's told me about but that looks really cool nice background I had a couple of questions all right good job sign carvers of the day great job guys proud of you guys uh, da, 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 da. oh matt says do you ever take the housing off for a deep cleaning on your router uh you know what? I don't, as far as the, um, the 611, no, I don't normally. I normally just blow it out with my compressor. The only time I'll take the housing off, off is if I want to check the brushes. If I think if, and here's a, you know, here's a tip for you guys Bye, that, Scott. that I don't know that I've shared is if you look down in there where the brushes are, if it seems to be arcing a lot and it's a big spark, it could be something's going on in there. So if I saw that, if I noticed that, then I would take that housing off just to take a look in there. Maybe those brushes are cocked sideways or something's caught in there, or maybe they're getting worn down. You're talking with your hands again. Uh, Charlie Booster says, Eric, can you please do an update on your insights on the Bauer trim router quickly? Yes. Uh, I like the Bauer trim router. However, not you, not you, Scott, the other Scott. Uh, however, I have found I was out there carving with it a couple days ago, and it wasn't. It was cold, but not cold like what you've got, Charlie. So I have found that it doesn't like the cold very well. It uh, it takes a while to get moving. 
It really, it normally has a slow start anyway, but it's a really slow start when it's cold. Once it's up and running at full RPMs, then um, then it uh, then it's going pretty well. But it might if you're in really cold weather and you're in severe cold weather, Charlie. If I was going to use it, I might keep it in a place where um, it's a little bit warmer before I go out and carve in the cold. Anything else? No. That about it. All right, guys, so I'll show this one more time. Hopefully it won't get all messed up. So there's my email if you have questions. There's a video that you can go and watch uh, as far as, um, what was that for, cleaning the router bits? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cleaning the router bits. So go check that out. I, I, I do a pretty good job. I actually a demo cleaning those router bits. I'm going to try and zoom in on that. Don't move. Okay. So that's my email. If you have any questions um, or any questions on the, the workshops or anything, then uh, be sure to let me know and I will get right back to you. And if you have uh, sign carvers of the day, pictures that you want to send me, email me right there. Please don't leave me messages on Facebook because I might not see them ever or it might be six months before I do see them. And uh, same on Instagram. I just don't check my messages on there very much because I'm so inundated with emails. But I always check my emails like 10 times a day. So that's where I'm spending most of my time as far yeah, as answering said, questions. I'm so tired of the cold. Yeah, I bet. I'm tired of the cold and it's not even cold <laughs> compared to you guys. Uh, okay, so that's it, guys. Uh, we are going to get out of here, let you guys go on with your evening. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, we love you all. Stay safe, stay warm as much as you can. And, and if you're out driving, be careful. Yes, be very careful. And um, tomorrow's video, I think you guys will like. It's uh, some stuff I've go I'm went over on uh, my background that I haven't really delve into before. So I hope you like that, and then we'll be back live on Thursday. So, love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see Bye. you on the next one. Bye.